Up next, Justin's going to talk about Delver's Drop. Yes, Delver's Drop. So, this is a game that was actually kickstarted almost a year ago. Um, they were asking for 75 grand, and they got $150,000. Um, and that was back in March 2013. However, you can still pre-order the game right now, and you can start playing it as well. Um, for, uh, I believe, there's like uh, $15, um, you get the uh, a PC, Mac, or Linux version of the game, um, and uh, you get it through Humble Store. And uh, if you do the $15, you'll get like um, multiple copies of the game uh, for the different platforms you want. And then uh, for $20, you also get the soundtrack. So this game is a top-down roguelike game, which you kind of like start a, a dungeon and you progress your way through the different uh, lower levels of the dungeon. Um, kind of sounds like any other roguelike, but what sets this one apart is the physics that are in the game. And uh, in the uh, physics can kind of have like really crazy cascading effects, which can get a little out of hand quickly, but that's sort of part of the fun of it. Um, for example, you might throw a bomb at an enemy and then that bomb explodes, causing the enemy to move. And maybe the enemy dies, except when they die, they explode. And now they hit this block that hits you into a spike trap. Um, it can get pretty chaotic because some of these rooms have tons of enemies that will be bouncing around. There's springs that you can bounce off of. A lot of bouncing going on. Um, the bouncy, pixelscopic... Bouncy, bouncy. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't interrupt me. <laughs> bouncy, 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 bouncy. I'm sorry. We'll add in sound effects in post-production of boings. Um, anyways, uh, the company is Pixelscopic, and they are an indie company in Springfield, Missouri. They do, um, like, it was started as a three-man team, uh, and back, like, they started showcasing the game in PAX 2012, so they've been working on this game for a while, but uh, they've kind of been doing, they weren't always full-time on the project, they were kind of doing a lot of contract work as well to help support the game. Um, once they got enough money to actually do the, with the Kickstarter, they've been focusing more on this game, and also uh, they have a couple other work, people working for them, uh, contract workers, and also some interns as well. Uh, they do a lot of um, Twitch videos and kind of have like, um, they're really uh, active on their forums, on their website, so you can get a lot of information from them, and it sounds like they're working really hard on it. Uh, from what I've played so far, I really uh, enjoy it. Uh, there's four classes in the game right now. Uh, there's the typical... Uh, Oh, the rogue is sort of like their the main class, the one that they started off with, and um, then there's a wizard or a sorcerer, sorry, who's um, a bit more, I guess, floaty than the rest. Uh, so he's kind of hard to control, but it's also kind of fun as well. And he kind of shoots out magic. Uh, there's the gladiator. He's obviously kind of more the tanky guy and has like a big war hammer. And then they just put in the Beast Keeper, which is pretty good. I actually kind of like that character the most because they have a long-range whip that kind of does like an arc uh, area of effect. And you can actually... The whip will actually like clip through items in the game right now. It might just always do that. And uh, so you can actually like hit enemies that might be behind something, um, which is pretty useful. The other classes that they plan on having are an Elementalist... Um, assassin, a musketeer with a gun, and then like a harlequin who's sort of like a joker type character. You can find out more information about all of these characters on their website if you go under world. 
it's right by features and pre-order all along the top. Uh, so yeah, that's. Uh, oh, also they plan on doing um, uh, Android as well, and that will be coming out. So all of the um, the Mac, PC, Linux, those will be coming out mid 2014. The Android is scheduled for late 2014 right now. Um, the Android, they plan on doing something kind of like Bastion. Uh, so it's going to be a virtual joystick. Uh, you can kind of like press anywhere on the screen. Let me see if I have this. Okay, yeah, you could like press anywhere on the screen and then wherever you drag is where you're, you're going to move. Um, they'll probably have to have some other buttons as well. Uh, like for bringing up your shield, you can use your shield to block enemies or to block like incoming objects from hitting you and crushing you. Uh, and then I'm not sure if like attacking will be automatic, like it is in Bastion, or if you'll actually have a button for that as well. Um, I was kind of surprised. Like I was thinking uh, the attacks would be a lot more spammy, but they kind of feel a bit more deliberate in this game. Uh, so you can't just keep on like mashing down the attacks. Uh, you kind of have to like wait for the animations to play out, uh, but that it feels good, and I think you get like other weapons, and some are faster attack speeds than others. So there's a lot of variety there, a lot of things to pick up and grab. Um, and I should also mention that uh, according to the uh, Kickstarter stretch goals that they got, uh, they plan on doing like a a 100 level, like 100 um, handmade levels. So right now there's a lot of procedural generation going on, as you would expect, but there is a different mode that's kind of more like the adventure mode, I suppose, where you play 100 levels, and, you know, it's like if you ever get stuck on a level, you could kind of come back to it later on, and I, if you, if you uh, die, you don't start all the way back at the beginning. Uh, you can kind of, like, save your progress in that. And that is Delver's Drop. Any thoughts? So many thoughts. <laughs> Give it to us, Remy. <laughs> Can I start? Can I start? Um, well, first of all, I have to I have to say something. I'm like uh, Justin's polar opposite on the gaming <laughs> factor. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. That that's how we signed it on the on the contract for a uh, stretch goal cast, right? <laughs> but. This time, I have to admit, I'm really excited about this project. It has a lot of things that I'm really uh, looking forward to. Uh, the game looks really good. I can tell the gameplay is going to be really fun. And I have to say, it reminds me a lot of uh, the classic Zelda games. You yeah, can't tell me anything about it, right? I was going to so, say, say Four Swords. You can actually even uh, pick up items. Like You can pick up certain items and move them around. Uh, I think they just implemented that. So, and the fact that you can uh, get different classes, right? You're not playing only with Link. Like you can get your different uh, <laughs> <laughs> characters. That's that's a yep. really cool thing. So, I'm with you on this game. I'm really excited, and that's not gonna happen again. So don't get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, the art style really drew me in um, as well. I think. You know, it, it sold the Kickstarter. I think um, it was it's colorful. They kind of mentioned how he's like I was going for almost like a pixel art, but not pixel art style. Uh, so really like crisp, clean um, line work, you know, yeah. but uh, like bold colors, but it's not pixel art. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks. Great, and, and, and the, the characters are kind of cute but cool looking at the same time. So okay, I'm ready for Clint to rip on this thing. Rip a rip it, rip it a new <laughs> oh, one. Oh, why? I don't know. Why do you say that? Because the first two look. Someone's got to give. <laughs> someone's got to give some criticism. No, we, no. We I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I, did, I missed the fine print on the contract, which I don't <laughs> we, we had a contract. Yeah, you're the serious guy. <laughs> Justin's um, the. No, uh, looks... I don't know. <laughs> Justin's the cartoony graphics. Remy yeah. survival horror. <laughs> and the hater. You can't, you can't put us in a box like that, Jared. You just can't. No. <laughs> Sorry. This Which, looks tasty. This looks tasty. I, I like this. 
Um, and I'm not too surprised that Remy likes it too. I mean, I think all of us here are fans in some way of RPGs or those Zelda-style adventure games. So this is right up our alley. And, um, yeah, it looks really nice. I was going to say earlier that uh, the 2D art looks fantastic, but it's not a 2D game because I just look at the shadows, and the shadows look amazing. And unless they're using some new tech, I mean, there's that other game that's using the sprite-based uh, light tool that uh, got funded out on Kickstarter, and we talked about that last time. But this right. looks uh, several steps above that, so it's got to be uh, 3D graphics that made to look 2D. And uh, and then you mentioned the physics and the gameplay, so I was like, okay, it's got to be like this slick 3D game that looks just amazing. It's like a next-gen Zelda, but, you know, we have a next-gen Zelda, but this like, if they never left that camera view from the 90s, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, this looks really fun. It's uh, it's only single-player, right? Um, actually, there is going to be a... Uh, there's a co-op, but the second player doesn't play as a Delver. They play as, like, a little companion character. And then oh, I think there's also... I funny. was kind of looking through the forums, and I saw some mention by one of the lead developers of, like, a four-player battle mode. So... I don't know too much about that right now, but yeah, apparently mm -hmm. that's in the works as well. Yeah, no, this. But I hot. think it'll probably all be yeah. local. Sorry. Local? Oh, okay. Probably, I think so. I. Yeah. It'd be easier. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I play the crap out of this on iOS when it does come out. So I yeah. guess the qu the question for the audience is is based on kind of you know the fact that this has already been funded. Is there still a way to back this on their personal website or? Also, it's not coming out for iOS. It's Android and Ouya are the other two things. It might well. Yeah, it's maybe coming it, out for iOS. Oh yeah, it's, it does say iOS. Leading. You're it's right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So is there a way to back this still? How can, how can yeah, they like get I mentioned, um, go to the website. Along the, if you go to delversdrop.com, you'll see multiple pre-order <laughs> buttons on the main page. Click on any of those, and you can do uh, either pay through PayPal or Amazon payments. Um, yeah, fifteen dollars get you the uh, pre-order and basically the access, the current access right now, the beta access. Um, so you'll get the cross-platform and DRM-free upon the release. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's for 15 For 20 you get the soundtrack as well. And the soundtrack sounds pretty cool. So far, I, I enjoy it. So for the $15, you get the, uh, just the PC and Mac version, or you also get the, the iOS version when it comes out? I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think you might get all of them. But I might have to like double check their Kickstarter page. Um, let's see here. And then, as a follow up to that, is there Steam keys? Is there a way to, to incorporate this on Steam? They actually did uh, go through their green. They got the green light, um, and so yeah, they will be on Steam as well. And you will get a Steam key. And I think that all this is provided through the Humble Store. Great. 